Hi everyone, and thank you very much for joining us for today's Rural Outreach and Innovation Talk, brought to you as part of the European Microfinance Platform. Over the coming weeks, we will be showcasing the latest trends in rural development by sharing ideas, experience and inspirational stories. We are very lucky today to be joined by Etienne Motet, the Head of Innovation at BFC, Etienne will be sharing his insights into how technology is transforming rural finance, from the opportunities being offered by new advantages to the practical limits of delivering services using smartphones. Etienne has over 10 years of experience managing financial services and fintech projects in Central Asia and beyond. He's also the creator of OpenCBS, an open source microfinance software that is now being used by dozens of financial companies in Asia, Africa, and the Caribbean. Etienne joined business and finance consulting at the end of 2015, taking charge of the company's digital and fintech development. Etienne, thank you very much for being here today. Please take us away whenever you're ready. And also, don't forget to unmute your mic. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you very much. So today, thank you for being with us first. And uh, we are going to look at uh, the question, digital for farmers, and how the context and the countries where we're operating are influencing the way to bring digital value to farmers and rural areas. For this, we are going to study four different contexts. First, we will do something perhaps a bit original in our industry. I propose you to look at a very developed market, which is the North American market, and look at how technology is being used there to support the farming uh, industry. Then we will look at two farming applications, which have been launched in Myanmar and Georgia, and see what type of opportunities and challenges they are facing there. Then we will focus on one very new and dynamic trend in uh, digital services, which is internal, Internet of Things and how smart devices combined with uh, mobile applications can bring uh, great value in rural areas. And last but not least, we will look at one specific experience of BFC in Georgia, where we have been involved in the development of a web catalog for farmers, and we'll see what did we learn from the uh, design, implementations, and uh, conclusion of this project in Georgia. So to start, let's look at uh, what is happening in mature market, more specifically the North American market. I will not remind you uh, what does farming in North America looks like. It's very industrialized, very mature, some may say even over mature. And many uh, technology providers are right now addressing this uh, farming industry in different type of uh, software. You can have farming software, marketplaces, or input usage optimization tools. And we will look at examples of each of these solutions. First, farming software. So I choose the example of Farm at Hand, which is a software developed in Canada. The concept is a multi-device farm management software for big or medium holder farmers. In terms of functionalities, it includes some activity tracking, including land mapping, task tracking, income and expenses, some automations of reporting, and so on and so forth. A fully integrated tractor fleet management, so that the whole fleet of tractors can be uh, managed remotely by uh, the farmers. Inventory management to allow optimization of uh, inventory usage, be able to sell and to buy at the right moment for the business. These type of solutions are usually either advertisement-based or fee-based business model. It means that the farmer is going to pay himself to uh, access the solution. This uh, initiative is one example of many others. There are many software dedicated to farm management in the uh, US and in Europe. Second example, the marketplace. So we look at FarmLead, which is a marketplace for North American farmers. The concept is a marketplace for selling or buying grains over North America. 
In terms of functionalities, it's relatively simple. You are posting available grains and you can find on sales grains on the platform. You have access to a negotiation room when, where you can interact with the other seller or buyer and you can cut a deal right away on the platform. And farm lead uh, business model relies on transaction percentage, which they are getting on every transaction closed on the platform. So this is how business is working. What's interesting is that even so the marketplace is fully digitized, this company is very present locally. It means that they are participating in many local events with farmers, many uh, different organization uh, events, and they have as well very uh, aggressive advertisement campaigns on all blogs related to agriculture in North America. So digital, but as well very locally based. And uh, last example of uh, digital initiatives for uh, farming is this just just in time plant nutrient C. So it sounds a bit uh, exotic. Concretely, what it is, it's a technological tool to optimize use of uh, fertilizers uh, called Soludrip. So it's a brand of fertilizers and they started their own technological tools. Concretely, what it is, is quite simple. It's a plant nutrient calculator. So you have an interface where you can, based on the type of uh, crop, the size of your land, the specificities of this land, you can get full uh, calculation of how much uh, nutrients you need and get some specific advice. So they have a web interface and they have as well mobile applications to bring the technology to the field. And yes, it covers many crops and so on, this I said already. So what is interesting is that here we have a technology which is here to support the main business model, which is simply sell input. It has double impact. First, help customers better use the product or more easily use the product. And second, and very interesting value added, that this type of applications allows the firm to collect data on usage of their product. They know what crop do users use the most, I mean, use the most. They can see how their product is being used. They can potentially identify some new opportunities about how to improve their, uh, their offer. So these were three examples. What can we conclude of this example in very micro market? First, farmers are the primary target of these tools. And it makes sense. Why? Because farmers are highly digitized. The industry is very developed. The industry overall is quite uniformed. And you have a mature and self-sustainable market. Second thing to notice is that uh, even so we talk about technology, these uh, tools are very uh, are supported by a very strong local nurturing of potential users. All this software, they always announce on their website that they are present at, at different seminars where farmers are being gathered. And so they are really marketing physically their solution where they work. So in a nutshell, in this major market, we have farms as very profitable business. Technology is already part of most farmers' practices. So technology ventures can make an impact and be profitable ventures. So this is for mature market. Now let's look at farming apps in developing markets. We're focused on two specific initiatives we've been in touch with at BSC, which is Golden Paddy in Myanmar and Tractor in Georgia. So first, let's, uh, before explaining what is Golden Paddy, let's look a bit at what is the context in Myanmar and why this initiative started. So Myanmar has a specificity of having a very low yield in uh, farming, even compared to countries, similar countries in the neighbors, like uh, Laos or Vietnam, the yield is very low. But strange as it may seem, the smartphone penetration is really high in Myanmar. Why? Because uh, the country has been locked uh, closed for a very long time and phone entered the country only recently. So people, many people bought directly a smartphone instead of buying a standard phone like it has been the case in, uh, in many countries. So smartphone penetration is very high. The concept of the solution is a smartphone app to support farmers in daily activities. So it's, it's quite general. So the functionalities are quite broad. You have knowledge information, so different training information, as you can see here, 
some best practices are shared, some uh, how to react to different type of best issues and this type of thing. You have some market information like prices, available buyers around, inputs as well available. And uh, last objective is to give financial access through the platform, give the capacity to farmers to request uh, loans right away and access financial services directly through the platform. What's interesting is to see what channels are used to spread this solution over Myanmar market. So the main channels are first Facebook, which is broadly used in, uh, in Myanmar and which seems to be the main uh, way to do marketing. Then there are promoter programs, so people receiving a small fee when they spread this solution. And a big set of partnerships with input suppliers with NGOs who can support in the content of the platform and as well with state agencies who are really interested by the data this type of platform is able to collect. Golden Buddy is used by around 2 million farmers already in, in Myanmar, so it's a very valuable source of information for institutions like state agencies. And about the business model is mainly planned to uh, monetize through the data and partnership with financial institutions. So concretely sell the data of farmers to financial institutions who can then provide loans to the farmers. So this is for Golden Paddy Tractor. The concept is quite similar. Even so, the, the country is quite uh, different. So it's a smaller country, definitely less farmers. But there is still an issue of low yield among farmers in Georgia and the input supplier uh, structure is industry, let's say, is, is more structured. So the concept is quite similar. Some, I mean, weather information, information about different crop. Uh, one important fact about Tractor is that at, at the beginning, it's a video tutorial service. I mean, it's a, it's a website called Mosa Valley, which is providing high-level uh, agro advisory, and they extended the service to have this type of multifunction platform. In addition to what Golden Pretty proposes, uh, Tractor includes as well an e-commerce platform where inputs uh, can be uh, purchased by farmers. And the tractor as well has partnerships with cell phone companies to simplify the uh, access to smartphones for farmers. Uh, so it's a database business model too. And, uh, but there are challenges, mainly related to market size and as well the farmer kind of low profitability. But to conclude on this solution, what is really clear is that uh, the number of users of this application is increasing. Golden Paddy claims 2 million users uh, per month. Farmers, so farmers find some use in the tool, but the key pending question is really about business model. How uh, will these solutions be able to generate sufficient income to be profitable? And uh, most, I mean, these solutions are still uh, donor supported. So the key question is when will farmer businesses be sufficiently profitable to bring sustainability to these ventures? At this stage, there are subventions. Uh, and we, this is a big question. I mean, will the farmer activity be sufficiently attractive for financial institutions that they really pay for the data uh, they need? Or will it take more time? These are big questions. So now, Further than simple apps, how can we combine apps and Internet of Things devices to address specific needs? We look at two situations. First, uh, the case where we are trying to address the needs of one specific farming activity. So we look at two examples uh, from India, which are Stell Apps and Niruvaka. And one example from Nigeria, which is a bit different because here uh, it doesn't touch one type of activity, but just one specific need on agro value chain, which is the one of tractor. Uh, just important to note that this, uh, this example are from a series of webinars proposed by World Bank on Internet of Things, which I recommend you to, uh, to attend because there are some good content there. First, tell apps. So it's Internet of Things for co-farm. So concretely, the context is Indian dairy market, the biggest in the world, and uh, the fact that it's in India and takes some technology is available. The concept is Internet of Things and uh, softwares for co-farming co uh, activity as a whole, meaning they don't focus on one specific aspect. They try to address all the digital needs of uh, this type of activity. So 
So I have a broad set of products, including meal production application, procurement, cold chain, and even some uh, cattle uh, tracking related to insurance. And uh, so what, what does it allow to, uh, to focus on one specific type of business is that they can have a very uh, focused need analysis and as a consequence, a very focused marketing effort. I mean, when you just arrive on Stell Apps website, the first thing you see is that they are going to attend the Dairy Tech event in India end of August. So it's somehow it's, uh, it's convenient in terms of how to reach people interested by the solution. Yeruvaka is a, a similar initiative just for fishing farms, other type of industry, very big as well uh, in India. Concept is combination again of Internet of Things for fishing farms and the mobile applications to track what is, uh, what is happening. Some examples of this, so there is for example this pond mother, which is an automatic feeding system for fish. You have this pond guard, which is a live monitoring thing like at what is happening inside uh, the pond. And you have the software solutions uh, going with it. So just an additional example. Then Hello Tractor. So this is a bit different, it's not focused on one type of farming industry, but on one specific uh, aspect, which may be useful to different kinds of farmers, which is access to tractor. So the context is Nigerian market, where, uh, which is known to be one of the country with the largest inventory of unused farmland. And uh, there, most farmers are using manual or outdated technologies. So the main concept of Hello Tractor is just to commoditize tractor services. So make it in a way that people who don't have access to tractor can have access now. How does it work? It mainly works by providing tools for tractor managers and not for uh, farmers. So you have some businessmen, they work with tractors. They are having them and they are lending them to people and that's how they make their business. And so Hello Tractor focuses on them. What they provide is a device which can be attached to a tractor and uh, then a mobile application which allows to manage and optimize the tractor fleet usage. So you see how tractors are being, are being used, where they are being used, when the maintenance should happen, see which one are efficient, which one are less. So this is what uh, the platform allows. And so eventually what's provided is a tractor uh, service uh, a lot cheaper and more affordable for the farmers. So an interesting fact related to this is that till recently, Hello Tractor were selling their own tractor. They had developed a very simple model of tractor, which they were trying to sell, and eventually they stopped doing that and started focusing only on the device and on the mobile uh, application. So to conclude on this Internet of uh, Things uh, subject, that we see there are two different approach uh, of focusing the effort. Either you focus on one farming activities, or you focus on one specific type of factor in a value chain. So there is some kind of trade-off, we can say. Either on one side, you want to give everything to one specific type of farmer needs. So this is the case of Yeruveka or Stell Apps, but, uh, but the problem is that it's easier to identify the clients and reach them, but perhaps harder to satisfy them eventually. And the other option is just to uh, focus on one specific item, which can be used by several actors, the case of Hello Tractor. So this is for Internet of Things. Now let's look at a specific experience of uh, BSC. So BSC worked on Arkido, which, is an, uh, which provides basically easier input access for farmers in Georgia. So Georgian market uh, as I spoke already about previously, so it's a limit. It's, it's a small size country. The credit market is very competitive there. The rural areas have, uh, let's say, an average level of uh, technical literacy, but uh, there are a lot of small scale farmers there. I mean, the size of land is uh, very small. So this is the country. The specific context of our project is the following. We had Crystal as a partner. So Crystal is one of the leading MFI in Georgia. They have uh, already a network of input uh, suppliers as partner with, uh, with them. And agriculture is really one of their strategic field. And an important point to note is that it, it was a donor supported project. And it has, it has as well an impact about how we, uh, how we handle such project. 
So what was the initial concept? The initial concept of this Aikido was to build an agro catalog for farmers with the idea that the farmers would connect themselves on the web, access the platform and buy input using uh, credit from Crystal Microfinance Institution. So this was the initial objective, to see farmers use the platform themselves online and then on the other side, the input suppliers would uh, post their product on the platform. What uh, question we ask uh, ourselves during the concept, let's say, creation? We started wondering how many farmers may we eventually have actively using the platform. Like we calculated a bit uh, the rate of internet penetration, smartphone usage among farmers, among crystal clients, and uh, started really uh, worrying that there was a risk of seeing the platform quite unused, just because it's uh, quite difficult to create this type of place where people will naturally go and purchase, uh, purchase things. So we decided to uh, adjust a bit the, the approach. And uh, as a first step, we decided to make the tool a sales tool for Crystal Field Staff. So concretely, it's a platform which has been used through a tablet by the sales staff of uh, Crystal to go provide fast input purchase loan to farmers. So concretely, as we see in this picture, the loan officers and salespeople go on the field with the tablet, discuss, discuss with the farmer and place the orders right away in the platform. Then the backend system of Crystal kicks in, give an automated uh, answer on the loan request, and the farmer can right away know whether his loan will be disbursed or not. So this was kind of very concrete, very internal way of starting to use the system. And uh, the results have been really interesting because in the first six months of usage, we could disburse uh, over 2,000 loans for around 200,000 uh, loans of uh, credit and already have very significant number of suppliers using and of products on the platform. So this is really uh, interesting. And I think we can, the way we kind of adapted our concept, we can see it in two ways. First, uh, we can see it as a ch real change of focus, turning uh, the open platform idea we had at the beginning into a more internal sales tool uh, concept. So this is the first way we can see it, but we can as well see it as the kind of natural first step to do before trying to attract external users to the platform. From Crystal point of view, from the microfinance institution point of view, the easiest clients to attract on the platform are existing clients of the financial institution. So using it as an internal tool is perhaps the smartest step you can do to make sure that the clients of the financial institution are used to the platform. They use it first with the loan officers, then they, start, they can start using it by themselves and progressively it can become a more universal tool. So here uh, it's interesting how the change of uh, initial ID, initial concept, helped us mitigate risk of seeing the platform unused while moving forward in uh, getting something uh, operational. So this is for all for Aikido. Now, what are the main kind of takeaways of these different uh, examples? So, as I said, I mean, I, there is no uh, straight answer to this question. There are just some uh, main uh, ideas which can help guide the initial steps of uh, digital projects and identify the, the opportunities. First is that bring uh, the services straight to the farmers may not always be the best option in developing markets because uh, mainly because these farmers are not very profitable business. So if you want your initiative to be profitable, selling them right away to farmers may not be the, the best option. A good first step to uh, before starting a digital venture is to ask what are the actors in place which we can help better serve farmers uh, and rural areas. So concretely, Instead of creating a full new venture, are there some people I can help with my digital services? So this can, this can help you adjust your model and as well find the right partnerships. In terms of what setup to have to start a digital activity, it's important to keep in mind that it's always uh, uh, safer uh, to go through an existing actor than creating a fully new venture to propose a digital technology. 
Like if you have a well-established uh, actor, you can really leverage the uh, existing structure to make an impact. So this is what, what we have done uh, with Crystal in Georgia, is uh, really using their capacity. I mean, this venture would not have been possible with everything uh, they had already, like their network of loan officers, their network of input suppliers, their IT systems. So this was uh, all indispensable for this tool to make an impact. So this is uh, one important point, but on the other hand, I would like to to, uh, to moderate this uh, opinion on new venture and by the fact that there are some solutions which uh, need to be led by independent ventures if you want them to scale. And uh, more specifically, I'm thinking about marketplaces. A lot of initiatives are, are, are launched as uh, and have as an objective to play a role of facilitation between the different actors of the market. So it may be uh, farmers, warehouses, buyers. So you want to create an independent platform to kind of facilitate interaction between these actors. In this kind of cases, it makes uh, a lot of sense. And actually, I think it's indispensable that this facilitating actor is neutral. It has to be a new independent venture. It cannot be uh, launched by one specific site, like a financial institution launching a marketplace uh, for farmers and wanting to open it to other actors would uh, would never be trusted as much as a fully independent entity which doesn't have uh, doesn't have a connection specific connection with one side of the of the ecosystem. So. This was it. So it was a, a, quite a general overview. We don't have a clear answer, but I hope it uh, was source of inspiration for you for your next uh, digital projects. Thank you. Oh, uh, thank you very much, Etienne, for your very insightful presentation. Um, we are running a little bit behind schedule, but I would like to suggest to the group that we continue on our discussion for around 10 minutes. If anyone does have a press engagement, then please, you know, feel free to uh, stink out the back <laughs> if they'd be. Um, Etienne, I, I thought just before we start the discussion, I would come in with the, the first question. Um, you mentioned uh, so obviously it's like Gordon Parry and Tractor. They said we're go hard to train to become sustainable. How do you actually see them evolving over the coming years? Well, one of the choice, uh, I mean, Golden Paddy and Tractor have done, which somehow makes sense at initial step, is that they are they are proposing many different functionalities and they are targeting the whole farming market uh, as a whole. And uh, I think it's a, somehow it's a, it's a good way to uh, to start uh, because they have a lot of NGO support and partnerships, so they have the capacity. Uh, as well, thanks to donor support to uh, to spread their solution. But uh, to become sustainable, it would probably be necessary for them at some point to start specializing in what they see brings the most, uh, let's say, income and value for, for their venture. So I would not be surprised if over a few years we see this uh, type of platform uh, specializing, perhaps by removing some type of functionalities and really focusing on some specific aspect of what they are providing, which may be access to finance, which may be a marketplace capacity, access to pricing. But uh, I think probably before reaching sustainability, they would need to uh, go through some type of uh, period of specialization of what is, uh, what is being done by their platform. That's, that's very interesting. So do you feel we actually have to limit the services which we're providing? At this stage, uh, at this stage, no, because I think it's good to try several things because it's uh, it's it's hard to uh, anticipate what is going to work when you are the first person giving a smartphone application in one specific market for for farmers. So I think the approach of trying several things is uh, is a good start. After the question is uh, when you want to uh, improve and improve your your profitability. It's, uh, you will need to choose. You cannot keep some part of. Uh, you, can, you need to kind of focus your efforts on where you see you bring the most uh, the most value. And uh, this, uh, this, in terms of timing, how this should come, I think it it should come. I think quite naturally that you try several things. You have the statistics, and you can see how much the different parts of your system are being used. And based on that, you will make strategic choices. 
to kind of dig in uh, improving uh, one specific functionalities, and on the other hand, you may decide to just drop some of the functionalities. That's a bit, uh, I think it's just a natural process when you have some new new ventures, and that's probably what Hello Tractor did as well. I, uh, I not, noted that at the beginning they were proposing uh, tractors on sales and they dropped this part of their concept. It's probably because they noticed that the benefits of this part of the activity was not compensating all the effort it needed on their side. Like to sell tractors, you need to have logistics to sell tractors, you need to have a partner who is building tractors, you must have some design, you must, there are a lot of many new parameters which enter into game and perhaps they just didn't, they understood that it was not making sense to uh, to deal with that. So that's why they decided that the, they should focus their effort more on the device, on the tracking device, and on the mobile application. And that's where the, they would have the most value added to uh, to bring uh, to the market. Very interesting. Thank you very much. Um, does anyone else have any questions for Etienne? Please uh, feel free to jump right in. Don't forget to unmute your microphone. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you, Tian. Uh, this is Mitro speaking. Uh, thank you for such an interesting and comprehensive presentation. Uh, I have uh, two uh, questions, and my questions will be more connected with the banking practice, uh, probably more than with the farming side. So obviously, it's our specialization in BSC. Um, well, and uh, my first question uh, will be about the Golden Paddy uh, solution. Uh, so, uh, as I remember, you mentioned that uh, the data from farmers, uh, which is collected in the database, uh, is uh, afterwards uh, sold to banks. Um, but uh, my question is, what is actually the uh, source of data? So, uh, do farmers uh, enter their uh, agricultural data by themselves? So, uh, and probably, uh, if, if you know, of course, uh, if you possess this information, then how uh, can uh, data be verified? For example, uh, can, uh, e can farmer uh, enter uh, the yield of himself, which uh, in fact is, uh, which uh, is twice larger, higher than uh, than he has in fact? Uh, and uh, is there also like uh, information of the costs uh, borne by uh, farmers, uh, not only the yields? Thank you. Thank you, Dmitro. Uh, at this stage, uh, when the farmers in Myanmar are connecting to Golden Paddy, they are indicating uh, the type of crop they are having. I think they are indicating as well the size of land they are having, but they are not entering at this stage uh, more details in terms of uh, how much expenses and income and so on they are having. The system, uh, I mean, when they are just entering the system, after uh, I may come back, the system includes some uh, farm management section, which uh, <coughs> where the farmers have, in theory, the capacity to uh, enter the income, expenses, and so on. But uh, the people from Golden Paddy told me that at this stage, still very few farmers start entering information because it's, uh, I think it's just a lot more complex. Start, starting really to manage your farm, where you are a small uh, farmer, perhaps, uh, with relatively low level of education and really managing, starting to manage your farms right away with your with your cell phone, is a is a lot bigger bigger step. So uh, at this stage, yes, just some basic information on type of uh, activities they're having, uh, location. So all this required at uh, first login, and uh, more deeper information. They uh, were uh, planning to collect this type of data through the farm management, but at this stage, it's uh, the spread and the level of usage of this farm management is still relatively low. Uh, but yeah, th this was in the ID, but they were uh, overall quite. For now, there is not big quantity of detailed data collected. More kind of high level understanding what activities are in which uh, region who. Uh, how many 
potential people are there, but in terms of detailed prices, detailed uh, farming information, uh, it's still uh, very little. Oh, okay, thank you. I see. So uh, maybe I was thinking uh, too uh, too optimistic about the uh, like uh, credit risk management component uh, benefit of uh, this uh, solution. So it's it more really uh, farmer oriented than. Uh, bank uh, credit decision and risk management oriented uh, at this stage at least uh, and okay thanks and my second question uh, will be about uh, our actually about Georgia and uh, the web agro catalog uh, so uh, uh, I, I think it's worth mentioning uh, at least to the uh, uh, to the guests of this webinar, uh, maybe uh, who's less uh, familiar with the uh, with this business process. So, as far as I know, uh, by the moment uh, of the launch of uh, Akido of this web agro catalog, uh, Crystal MFI already had uh, its own uh, rapid loan product, uh, which uh, this product uh, based on a very fast and revolutionary business process. Uh, uh, without uh, traditional financial analysis and normal document collection, uh, just based uh, so this is just based on the uh, credit history, uh, and um, uh, also Crystal had their own uh, internal uh, credit uh, software and uh, uh, developed uh, well-developed uh, business process which was just connected to Akido, which in its turn uh, uh, just um, uh, it is just a smart tool uh, for uh, connection and uh, collecting and trans uh, transmitting some uh, basic uh, data like uh, name, uh, application amounts, and so on. Uh, so, uh, am I right? Uh, and my uh, so this is not the question. The question is uh, actually uh, <laughs> you can also comment on this. Uh, uh, sorry for for a long question. Then the question is: uh, Are any are, are there any other solutions or applications mentioned by you uh, within this uh, presentation also somehow connected with the uh, banking uh, system and uh, what other uh, benefits for financial institution uh, can be emphasized uh, here? Thank you. Yes. Uh, so about uh, Akido, yes, you're you're totally right. One of the and what that's interesting to see that if this uh, system Akido could bring really interesting value for Crystal, is because they had this fast product, and this tool became actually a very uh, adapted channel to disburse really fast this uh, this fast credit tool. So it's uh, it's really because Crystal had. This, uh, this credit product in place because they had quite streamlined uh, technology behind to approve this fast loan that this tablet could have an interesting impact. Starting this type of venture in a company uh, more poorly structured, perhaps with not very uh, clear technologies behind, no product adapted, will have a lot less value because really the, the value the system really brought was on the capacity of giving a fast answer to the farmers on the loan request, giving like based on the product you chose, based on your credit history, we can tell you uh, a few seconds or a few minutes after if your loan is going to be dispersed. In terms of connections of uh, products with the uh, financial uh, industry, it's uh, on the US side, uh, I don't uh, know, but I suppose that the market is so developed that there are all the financial uh, services are available. Uh, both uh, Golden Paddy and Tractor have partnerships with financial institutions. Golden Paddy, so they are working on them, as I told, to sell the data. Tractor already has partnership with uh, TBC in Georgia, I think, to, uh, I suppose, to sell the data and to propose uh, credit services through the platform. So uh, TBC would have access to the information of the farmers and would somehow use it to propose uh, interesting services to them. On the uh, Hello Tractor side, there was as well, uh, there is as well connection because you, uh, through, the, through this application, we collect data on uh, tractors being used. Uh, what, uh, what are the different fleet of tractors used by different uh, users of the, 
of the uh, application and you can see as well where are the farms where the tractors are being used so you have very valuable data which uh, can be sold to, uh, to banks as well for hello tractor specificity they uh, have some partnership with financial institutions to uh, develop tractor products this was really really interesting if you go to a hello tractor website there are some uh, or on youtube i think there are some videos which are advertisements for uh, to push people to invest in tractors so some totally random people from cities kind of push them in investing their money in a, in in a tractor through the hello tractor platform so to do this i suppose they have some type of partnership with financial institution and they are uh, basically asking uh, i mean advertising to get people to invest in tractors saying that uh, they would buy some tractors under the name and then some people will be managing the usage of these tractors over one specific region so in this specific case i don't remember the exact details but there was a scheme developed so that uh, financial uh, institutions bring the financing to uh, basically purchase uh, purchase the tractors and um, so yeah so there was connection as well with financial institutions about the two other initiative in india i don't uh, i don't know the details yet i mean that that maybe i i, I suppose it uh, it's natural it makes totally sense to uh, attach uh, these services with uh, some kind of financial investment because for for a co farm or a fishing uh, fishing farm making making limited product probably they don't have the capacity to right away invest in uh, a full equipment of internet of things so most probably there is a financial actor as well uh, getting into play to uh, to finance the equipment but uh, i don't know the details at, at this stage on this thank you very much Jen. so as i understand this uh, hello tractor the latter example is also uh, uh, at least in this part, functioning uh, the same like uh, what we usually call uh, uh, input supplier value chain financing, but uh, with the difference that uh, instead of inputs, uh, they sell like tractors or other equipment here in this scheme. Uh, okay, thank you, and I, I won't take more time. <laughs> uh, thanks. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Etienne and Dimitro. Um, I am actually afraid it is all we have time for today. But if anyone does have any more questions for Etienne, then please get in contact uh, with Etienne, Mayor Cortenbruce, or myself, and we'll make sure that we get to him and uh, he can answer him in, in his own time. Um, so thank you to everyone for participating, and especially to Etienne for his wonderful presentation and answering all our questions so diligently. Um, the Rural Outreach and Innovation Talks will continue on September 12th. Then Joanna Ryan from Risen Fund will be speaking to us about the Women Empowerment Fund. I look forward to seeing many of you there. Thank you again for your time and enjoy the rest of your day.